Hello everyone, welcome to our regular sync about updates from development team. Uh, we'll share updates of the previous week and what we are planning to do next week. Lucian, let's start with you. Thanks, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, great. So last week, the primary job is that I have opened up the subspace PR for creating the fraud proof on an executor. Since the maintainer of substrate doesn't plan to include the extrinsic like uh, execution proof into substrate, so we don't have to wait them to merging our PRs and all the required changes has landed in the substrate main master branch. This PR implements the fraud proof creation and verifi verification on the executor node. It's nearly complete, but you know, there are still a few to do. One of them is critical and it's probably an issue similar to the previous undeterministic storage proof problem. So moving forward to this week, I will be working on this critical to do and the proof of verification on the primary nodes in the meanwhile. Yes, that's everything from my side. Okay, and I saw that you also implemented uh, the uh, fraud proof for the initialization and finalization, not just extrinsic switches. Nice. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, it's everything like for the fraud proof creation, all these stages. Yeah. What okay. is the critical to do? <laughs> you know, I, I I still haven't like figured it out. It's probably a similar issue like to. We have like uh, met before the undeterministic storage proof. It's it's still not like I can explain right now. It's kind of but there's some there's no some problem. bug that you, yes. or some unexplained behavior. Yes. What is it? The fraud the fraud proofs are not returning the same result. Mm. Yes. Sometimes like. If you like come out some print or logs related to the storage proof call, the behavior changes. <laughs> so you know, I I, I had to debug this. Okay. You know, what is wrong? Yeah, the chance sent me a link. Uh, there is basically like a print LAN that captures the storage route. And once you capture it, like the behavior changes for some reason. Like if there is some side effect from, from that call, even though it should be like read only. Wow. Okay. And did I hear you right, Li Cheng? You said that the maintainer of Substrate has chosen not to implement the PR? It, 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 they decided to not include the extrinsic execution proof into the Substrate itself. So it's like currently it's specifically for our use case. It's not generally like uh, useful for the other projects, so they like uh, don't plan to include this feature into substrate itself. But that's not a problem because we can implement it on our side. So yes, yes. Okay. We were like uh, planning to contribute back to substrate, but they decide yeah, not accept it. It was worth a shot. OK, thanks, Li Chen. Um, Justin, you're next. Awesome. Um, so last week, uh, helped get all the team up on Subspace Desktop um, and helped work with Osgun on getting the new snapshot resolved with the entitlements issues that we were having. Um, worked on adding a simple support ticket to the tech support channel. Um, for some reason, it's not sending, but I'm going to fix that this morning. Um, but just a simple little template so we can try and get some consistency out of the users when trying to afford support. Um, had a meeting with the Imprentice ambassadors as well, 
where I kind of went over some of the test net and some of the moderation rules and everything. Um, so that was a good opportunity to, to, uh, to spread that information with them as well. Um, and then I was looking into adding uh, dynamic docs to the documentation, if, if you want to call it that. Basically, Nazar was mentioning that it's kind of seems silly to have two copies, you know, like the readme on the mono repo and then, you know, a, a copy of that on the subspace documentation that I've been working on. Um, luckily, there's a plugin though that will basically just pull that readme from the mono repo and add it to our docs dynamically. Um, so I think that'll be a good solution for that. Uh, moving into this week, I'm going to test out another pre-release of the subspace desktop that we built over the weekend. Um, be going to be looking into a small few few things that we can try and do to help with like repeated questions and stuff on Discord. Um, you know, such as like making the user read the full welcome message and like verify that they've done that, um, or maybe even something such as like bot auto responses um, for like common questions and things along those lines. Um, and beyond that, just continue to help out with the, with the uh, community and try and kind of iterate on our uh, support structure. And obviously continue to report any bugs that we may find within the uh, within the testnet and subspace desktop. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Justin. Any questions to Justin? Cool. Thanks. Uh, Oscar, you're next. OK, sure. <clears throat> so my focus was on subspace desktop. Uh, I was submitting some PRs and fixing some issues. Also, I was reviewing some other PRs, including Leos and yours, Nazar. So what I've done is uh, we had an issue for macOS signing. And that the reason was on entitled ones. We fixed that by adding the necessary keys. However, we are uh, for solution of that, we added all the possible keys and probably two or three of them are not necessary. So we should try to eliminate the possibilities and uh, keep the entitlement keys as small as possible. Next step is that on that macOS signing and after that we should have a, a new release. Uh, so we tried to upgrade Tauri, but there were some issues like dependency conflicts. Nazar and I uh, inspected that. Nazar submitted a PR on both Tauri sites, and I believe there's, sorry, on the, on the SDT repo. So we are waiting on that, but uh, while we are waiting on that, we are also uh, removed the dependency of the STD from our repository. Um, it is working on Linux, but not on macOS at the moment. Uh, there's a bug on the front end. I don't know the cause. I can inspect, but Leo will help also figuring that out. Also, uh, another good news is launch on boot issue is completely resolved. Like um, Linux, Windows, macOS, all of them are working properly when we launch the application subspace desktop it initializes or uh, configures the operating system such as it will uh, load the application on boot and um, our button is working as expected we can disable or enable within the application uh, so we got that going which is another big step on the box um, other than that we made the farming and syncing the node I mean, plotting and syncing the node part uh, concurrent to each other. So user will wait less time on the initial plotting phase. And also we made some uh, changes on the front end side for uh, emphasizing that this is a test net. Uh, the coins earned will be test net SFCs. Um, yeah, that's that, that was my week. And uh, for the remainder of this week, the, this week, I will, as I said, try to eliminate the unnecessary keys from entitlements and continue to work on other issues that we have on subspace desktop. I have one question about, question about entitlements. Uh, yeah. Is the problem reproducible on your machine? Like, how did this miss that? Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, the issue with entitlements in, in signing, uh, mm -hmm. is it reproducible on your machine? Like, if you don't add necessary entitlements, does it fail for you as well? Because it seems like it was working for you, but not for others. That was no, no, no. Uh, 
The reason for the confusion was that uh, I thought that if the signing was successful, it will run and run without any errors. So I initiated the app, it started running. I didn't wait for the complete syncing process. I thought that if signing was successful, uh, it will run like uh, without any errors. Hmm. But the problem occurs with the network or some other libraries. But it starts know. like at the very beginning of, of the exit of the start, like in yeah. five seconds. Yeah. So uh, as Jeremiah pointed out the bug, the problem occurred in two different places for me. One of them is the node syncing and one of them was the plotting. Uh, so in one of these places, there is something triggering the error. Uh, probably the app tries to do something which is not uh, qualified or verified from Apple. So we have to add those keys to entitlements. Uh, I added the keys related to network, but it still did crash. So I added four more keys, which seemed kind of relatable, uh, related. But I don't think all of them are necessary. So that's what I'm saying. Like uh, among those four keys, I should probably remove one or two, and this will be like brute force trying. Okay. Uh, there were also two issues over the weekend. One was for uh, desktop app on Windows. I don't exactly remember, but it wasn't like working almost at all. And there was another one, I believe, uh, on Mac OS 12 for someone. Yeah, uh, and that was for CLI node, right? Not SAS based desktop. I think so. Yeah. Uh, did you research any of those? Uh, no, I was busy with the Leo's PR and your PR today, so I will work on that tomorrow. Okay, basically, if you, if like I tag you to take care of it, like it's the ball is on your side, so like you need okay. to either reply or handle it in some way, like create a ticket, something, okay. or just make sure it, it's not forgotten. Uh, because even though we don't re recommend it yet, um, it is still something that we we need to take care of. People do report errors. Sure, it's it's in my list, so no worries. Okay, awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other questions to Oscar? Yeah, so Oscar, just so I understand, so with the current pre-release, it should run on my machine. Like I should be able to test and plot and run run the node on from the desktop. Yeah, uh, the version is 0.2.2, and it's a draft release, not the pre-release. Pre pre OK. Does that show up in the builds section or in the releases section? For me, yes, but maybe because it's a draft, uh, it might not be accessible uh, outside of the corporation. I don't know. Well, but Jeremiah should see it. Or maybe just me, because I will. No, I can see it. I don't know. Okay. I can see it. So I tested it on Friday. Okay. Okay, but we but you're gonna remove. You're just gonna like randomly remove them until you get the smallest subset that it works on. The entitlement. Yeah, keys. like basically we have four keys, so it should be four trials at most. So four builds. I, I'll mention. Um, I actually started one of those builds over the weekend, so there should be one version to test that already has one of those keys removed. I'll message you the details, Oscar. Okay, okay. Nice. Are you running it on CI or maybe you can just sign it several times locally if it should be faster? Uh, Justin sent me the instructions for do it locally. So tomorrow, again, uh, that will be my thing for testing. So I will try okay. to do it locally. If it fails, I will go back to CI because CI. Well, you, you already have executable on, on, the, on GitHub. So you should be able to like pull it, uh, remove signature from it, and then like sign it three times. It should be like five minutes versus two hours worth of time for every well, like, trial. Uh, I don't know how to remove a signature from an executable, but yeah. If it's um, way, sure. There should be some command. Or like okay. if you extract it in the wrong way, it will not be attached. Uh, it's like in metadata. Just okay. Google okay. it. Because two hours for, for every try, it's like several days of attempts. Exactly. It was taking too much time for just a single key trial. OK. Thank you. OK, just let me know whenever that's ready for testing, Oscar. And I still like to verify that it works on my machine. I'm just not, it's just not clear to me when it's at what stage it's ready, unless I just like monitor the repo, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Like as you suggested, uh, when I think it's ready and when, it's, when it works on my machine, I will just update our team uh, and it will be a pre release so that we can test it and then we can make the real release.
Okay, thanks, Osgar. Good progress. Uh, Ivan, you are next on my screen. Um, sure, yeah. Uh, last week I was working on the partial replica support. So um, I almost finished this uh, at, at, at the Friday, uh, but we had some issues. I had some issues and there are lots of the comments. Basically, um, I, um, I basically made a suggestion that um, instead of having the uh, database from the piece index hashes to piece offsets, uh, instead of uh, instead of that, we could also we could um, we could put on disk the uh, basically piece distance uh, to the piece offset uh, database. So um, instead of uh, instead of putting the piece index hashes, we would uh, put um, the the distance uh, itself, uh, so that it could, it would be easy to search um, as the rocks DB is sorted. So uh, and, and the issue was that uh, at first I made a mistake and um, implemented distance in, in the wrong way. Uh, I just uh, instead of using XOR, uh, I used the um, subtraction subtraction, uh, and we synced up uh, at the Friday with Vinazar uh, about about that, uh, and he uh, proposed a different solution. Um, so so that we, we would have uh, basically we we could think about the um, about the Placing the identity and placing of, of the piece indexes uh, uh, li like a ring, uh, uh, where the the center uh, is the um, is uh, is farmer's identity. So um, and the uh, basically uh, Nazar proposed it to map to map it into the um, um, basically in the middle of the um, of the um, field from zero to um, I don't think everyone is following. Sorry, uh, yeah, it's so, like so, too deep. Sorry, yeah. So, sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, in 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 the event, yeah. Uh, I just want to say that, yeah. Um, uh, I just um, I just made a distance with uh, using Vixor. Um, yeah, as it, it is supposed to be unique. Um, so I, I mean, uh, it's supposed to be um, bijection. Um, as for like any input, where it's supposed to be an output. So um, it it should be fine. Um, and all of the properties uh, are preserved. So yeah, and uh, it is also what is stated uh, in our white paper. Um, yeah, uh, I, I just um, removed the uh, subtraction and yeah, use XOR there. Okay, and that uh, issue where by storing the distance you don't have the information which side is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you, you don't you don't need to know like which which side basically because the distance is positive always. Uh, that is the one thing. And right, the, but if you want to retrieve it uh, back, like if you want to retrieve the hash, uh, it, it is it is unique. Uh, you want to retrieve the hash? Uh, why would you want that? Mm, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. okay, makes sense. Yeah, I I mean the the hash itself is useless, right? Uh, from from the hash you you can't retrieve the piece index itself. Yeah, hash is the key, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope to finalize the PR soon, and after that, um, I guess think up with Nazar about the multi replica and work on that uh, soon. So yeah, um, that's all from my side. Awesome! I really like the approach that you you take um, on the like distance. That's like a clever trick to to make it simple. Very nice. Thanks. Um, any questions to Ivan? If anyone is following, what was happening? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure I completely followed. We'll discuss it more in the protocol sync tomorrow. Um, however, a uh, simple question, is it the same as it's already described in the distributed storage spec or is it different? Is it, an, is it a different way of doing it? Um, I, I can't recall um, how it is described there, but uh, it's the same as in, in the white paper. Uh, the white paper just recalls the, the Cadendia and the XOR distance metric there, so yeah. Okay, can you check? It, it is the same. I, I think it is the same. It's just uh, in implementation detail how we like implement it on the database level to make it more efficient. But the API okay. is yeah. the same. Ivan, can you just double check that? Just re re review that part of the spec and make sure it's accurate. We, we, we're trying to keep the spec and the implementation as close together so that we don't have to read the code, read 10,000 lines of code to understand the protocol. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Of course. Cool. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Sounds great. Uh, thanks, Yuan. Uh, Red, you're next on my screen. Maybe you can share the um, process. 
Yeah, cool. Uh, mine's going to be like, I'm going to not too technical. Uh, most of the week spent in onboarding with Jeremiah and Nazar, uh, uh, just getting familiar with the mono repo that we have. Uh, most like I focus a bit more on the consensus side because I'm kind of familiar with the runtime structure of Substrate. So I look mostly on subs sub, uh, Subspace Farmer, how things are going there. And uh, as a next step, I have a call with Sergey there tomorrow uh, to uh, start working on the feeds on the runtime side of pieces that are missing right now and get started there. But if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Yeah, have you been able to set up a time with, with Lu Chang and Oskin this week as well to go through the uh, parts? Not yet. Uh, I've just got through with Sergey and I'm going to set up a call with uh, Oskin even as well as Lu Chang, uh, hopefully this week, as and when I get some time there. Okay. Okay. Can't wait to see your hands writing awesome yeah. stuff. Yeah. Very yeah. soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Serge? You're next on my screen. Uh, yeah, so today I have added a uh, nodal parachain, which is also from the second cohort, but uh, somehow I missed it previously, both on uh, archives and relayer. Also, I have increased uh, test B volume size. And uh, I was trying to update test A. I have updated node and farmer copied archives, but when I was copying archives, I accidentally copied them to test B first and test B ran out of space. So the block production stopped and I had to restart uh, bootstrap node. So it's currently syncing and uh, yeah, it will take some time. Uh, but yeah, on test A, I did almost everything, but uh, RPC endpoint currently doesn't work for the node. Uh, I wanted to, to check with Leo, but yeah, if he is not available, I will investigate for myself. Uh, so yeah, test B and test A are my like top priorities for now. And uh, once I'm done, I will continue with research uh, regarding Ethereum. Uh, I also co already covered the uh, current clients and I'm currently uh, checking what are the node as a service options we can use for uh, Relayer in the future. And yeah, as we had mentioned, we, we scheduled to call on feed validation for tomorrow. That's all. You mentioned that you resized the disk on test B. Uh, is it right. test B or test A? Test B. The one that's told? Yes. Mm, I didn't know it, pos it was possible to do quickly on, on uh, the installation. Yeah, I did it on, on digital ocean. Okay, nice. Um, other questions to search? Yeah, it looks like the relay is still working. Did that incur any downtime? Oh, it's not B? working. Yeah, it's, it's, um, oh, I see. It must be cached. Okay, so basically the, all the, the, all the, so the relay. It looks like RPC node. Broken. It looks like RPC node is still alive. The yeah. node that was broken is the the other one, so okay. you can still fetch the data from runtime. Yeah, just okay. no block production in the moment. Okay. It's just and it's because we ran out of space on. And corrupt the, database. On which database? Uh, no database. Okay. So the archival, wait. So that's the archival database got too large on the node, or was it the plot? No, just just on the do, on the droplet on the droplet volume, there was no space, right? To to yeah. Farm. Apparently, during block production, it was trying to write something and like crashed somewhere in the middle and got worked after that. Okay. But the other node was still alive, so we like syncing from that now. Now yes, to just take okay. two hours. How do how so do we monitor we 200 that gigabytes of data? Yeah. How do we how do we monitor that process right now? Or like, I guess I'm just asking like root cause. How do we prevent this from happening again? Like instead of just waiting for it to crash to resize it. I believe we do have notifications from Datadog. Yeah. It just happened very quickly. Yeah, we have a, a monitoring for that on Datadog, but uh, it 
it was because of because I messed up with copying up uh, archives, so it happened quickly. Oh, it was while you were actually copying new archives over, not yeah, just natural yeah. progression that it happened. Okay, I got right. you. Okay, okay, makes sense. We will have some automation at some point. Okay, uh, thanks, Serge. Uh, what I was working on are several things. First of all, we have right now over 500 nodes, 514 right now on the farm net. So I was answering various questions uh, from, from folks. Um, I was also working a little bit on the uh, farmer tests. Uh, the, the tests were, one of the tests was uh, disabled due to problems and Ivan proposed a fix. I proposed like a different fix, which makes things a little bit simpler in general. Um, then I was also working a little bit on the substrate upgrade in, in subspace uh, monorepo. It took a while. Uh, there were some problems. Uh, for instance, they enabled um, uh, GMA, uh, uh allocator in the RocksDB data dependency very, way deep in the de dependency tree. And that was actually not working on uh, Windows. So RCI broke because of that. So I had to fix it there and then upgrade again just to the while. Uh, but it's there, uh, and all of the changes that Luchain required for some of his work are already included, so that's nice. Um, also investigated a little bit the problem with uh, Tari, why we couldn't upgrade it with ZSTD. Um, I proposed a change into ZSTD uh, library itself, which will prevent similar problems going forward. Uh, it's not reviewed, not answered yet, so I'm not sure how much it will take. Uh, on the other hand, I've upgraded the dependency of uh, ZSCD in the substrate, which is approved in both uh, PRs in substrate and Polkadot, but not merged in, in either. Um, it's kind of orthogonal to what we are doing. We still want to upgrade uh, Tauri before we upgrade our node uh, in the desktop. So I also investigated what we can do there. Turns out the newer Tauri version actually uh, allows compression for some of the assets, apparently, or some things to make the executable smaller, but that is an optional feature. So just by disabling that feature, we disabled the ZSTD dependency in the first place, and we don't have a problem anymore. But there are some problems that Osgan and Leo will uh, see. Um, I'm not sure where they're coming from. Uh, I had to update the uh, Tauri front-end libraries. Uh, for some reason, it was crashing otherwise uh, during build process. Uh, so I think we'll figure that out, and we'll have the latest version, and everything will be good again. And I also spent some time, but didn't prepare the pull request yet because it's not fully ready on the OpenCL side, the library from uh, Supranational. I refactored the unsafe API into more safe API. There are still APIs for allocation miss missing, uh, still waiting for some answers from them. And then I will, will refactor tests to use that. We'll delete the old functions, and then we'll write some documentation and probably add it to CI so we can actually test the things that are added uh, during every build. And then we can proceed to upgrade the farmer to use the newer library. So there is still a chunk of work to be to be done there. Um, yeah, I think those are the main efforts. Take a recall. Yeah. Any questions to me, guys? Is there any any updates on the networking side, sir? No, we really didn't have time to work on that. OK. So right now, the sync is implemented, but we're still running an archival node on the client. Yes. Yes. OK. Uh, we will not change that until we have a next snapshot anyway. So that will probably be after a while. Uh, so I think we still have time to, to fix that. What, what's the uh, criteria for the next step, snapshot? Uh, I think we need to have something meaningful, let's say a partial replica, ideally multi-replica. And then it will be worthwhile to give people uh, that snapshot to test. Otherwise, it will be almost the same. So it's not really beneficial. Okay. We're still collecting feedback on the current one. OK. OK, Jeremiah, any updates uh, you want to share before we stop recording? No, not today. OK, uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you um, in seven days. Uh, have a good day.